Hello, little ones. Would you like to hear a story? I've got one for you. Of dungeons and douchebags. Long ago, the land of Erion was governed by many majestic empires. The humans of the plains, the elves of the forest, the oreads of the mountains, the marrow of the oceans, and the kobolds and Okiti taking what was left. But, as is so common amongst all with darkness in their hearts, those who had power would not be satisfied until they had more. War broke out, alliances being made and broken in a second, as the once civilized races slew each other in droves in vain attempts to get one more seat of power. The kobolds, on the brink of annihilation, sought out a new draconic god who would protect them. Instead, they found Dragotha. A powerful and terrible dragon, Dragotha cared not for the suffering of those around him. Taking advantage of the warring continent, Dragotha raised Irion to the ground, seeking to carve a mighty empire in his name. A last desperate alliance stood firm against Dragotha, and after a terrible battle, the dragon was finally slain. With Irion torn apart, and no one in any shape to continue the war, an armistice was reached, and the Great War ended. Now, many years later, Irion has started to rebuild, and the Age of Clockwork has begun. And our unlikely heroes, gathered first to celebrate a harvest festival, may soon find themselves at the center of another war. Trevlon, the halfling bar. I don't need sleep. All I need is a good case to follow. Corellian, the kobold paladin. I will not make the same mistakes again. Malafane, the half-elf rogue. I will find them. I will save them. Actions speak louder than words, boy. Bavagath, the Goliath Barbarian. I am man of simple tastes, friends, drink, cute little bunnies. And Momo, the Arakakra Cleric. If we have to fight, we will fight together. From humble beginnings, these brave adventurers may soon find themselves the key to saving the fallen empires. Last time on Dungeons and Douchebags Fallen Empires. Our heroes made some last orders for Batten Rance Hall before they set out to go and fight a dragon. Bavagath, in particular, made a late night run over to Port Mirandu, where he finally bought horses and a cart and carriage for them, so that our heroes didn't have to hoof it all the way to Merdil. After about half an hour of our heroes trying to figure out the difference between a cart and a carriage, they finally left along the southern road to try and find the kobold priestess. After a few days' travel, our heroes found the priestess bound and tied up in the middle of lizard folk territory. And unfortunately for them, the lizard folk were very hungry and very Cajun. Freeing her from her confines and making note of her phenomenal magic power, our heroes questioned the priestess Snalgu, considering correctly that she would probably know more about the situation than Zutzad. Snalgu explained that after there was obviously no more use for the job as Dragon Priestess, she took in the role of Hatch Mother, raising almost every kobold hatched in Merdil. And despite her previous position, she had strong objections when something, or someone, began whispering in the ear of King Zokdi, secrets that would bring a dragon back to life through a combination of necromancy and machinery. At the end of the day, despite our party's fear, Snelku said that all she wanted was for her people, and Irion, to survive, which they could not do under the reign and threat of a reborn dragon. And our heroes, still filled with fear, agreed to pursue the dragon and hopefully destroy it regardless. Our party continued on their journey before stopping in the small town of Sheepvale for a rest, which they graciously accepted, not wanting to camp out in the middle of the open desert. During the night, the party all had dreams relating to water and sunken cities, but Corellian and Thavagath heard a voice within their heads, saying that they would not be its servants, so they would instead be its slaves. Before they could learn any more, Mr. Fox, the Yugoloth who had harassed our heroes many times before, woke Corellian up and told the party they had five minutes to leave or they would be destroyed. Our party hurriedly exited the tavern, seeing the town of Sheep Vale on fire and under siege from an army of minotaurs and leading them, a 15-foot nightmare in plate armor, knocking aside buildings with one swing of his mighty hammer, the fearsome and legendary Jatagar Iron King. 
fleeing for their very lives, when our heroes finally stopped to rest, Malifane, emboldened by his recent talk with Esgal, demanded that they go back and face the Iron King. But Thavagath told him there was no point, for they would certainly die. And although there could be many more villages like Sheepvale to fall under the hammer, their survival and their taking down the dragon was ultimately more important at that time. Malifane stewed, but it being so early in the morning and the rest of the party and their horses being so tired, had no choice but to agree and settle down, at least a little. What reason could Mr. Fox have for helping the heroes? Will they be able to infiltrate Merdeal and take down the dragon? What happened to the wacky fun times of the first session? Oh, wait, 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 dragon. Yeah, dragon. Dragon happened. Find out on tonight's episode of Dungeons and Douchebags, Fallen Empires. Have you watched Who Framed Roger Rabbit yet? Welcome to Dungeons and Douchebags, Fallen Empires. I'm your host, Alex, and with me, as always, is my trusty crew. We've got Jojo. Raspberries. We've got Scott. It's no use! Rose Apple. Eat this! <laughs> <laughs> We've got Phil. I, I'm giving up at this point. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, good, good talk. We've got Atlas. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. <laughs> and we've got Walrus. All right. <laughs> All right. Have that primed and ready. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> uh, last time we left our heroes, uh, they were finally awake. Got caught by the Imperial Patrol. Same as me and that thief over there. <laughs> Alternatively, in an alternate dimension, our heroes had just uh, gotten the fuck out of the town of Sheepvale as it was being raised to the ground by minotaurs and spent what, uh, what remained of nighttime resting up before uh, dawn rises and they are, once again, out and about on the world map, which I will take us to now. Woo! Done. Woo! Soup. Fucking you just where are we? Was Sheepville this place here, over here, on the left? No, it was not. Uh, it was wait, just a, wait, because I am a right very now. lazy, very, very lazy map maker, there are any number of, uh, little towns and trading posts that are not marked on the map by villages. Uh, Isn't Sheepvale, like, right here? Sheepvale was two hexes to the right of where you guys are. And uh, now it is not there for a reason. Now it's not before. Alright, so, we're heading north, yeah? Uh, I think we are. Yes, you are heading mm -hmm. north because Merdeal is... On the eastern part of the northern half of Irion. Fucking metal, then. Uh, <laughs> since we are ridiculously close to big angry bull boy, does anyone have any um, qualms with going fast this time? No. <laughs> uh, let's, let's fucking go. <laughs> you uh, immediately stir the very tired horses up and tell them to go fast, and they sigh... Stand up and start heading off. Sorry about this, fellas. Sorry, folks, you can get a full night rest tonight. Also, pay. Um, this is a silly question, but would I be able to cast, like, lesser restoration on the horses to maybe make them less exhausted? Um, technically, they're not going to be exhausted until, uh, you start marching another five hexes. At that point, because they moved farther than necessary last night, it would count as a forced march, and then they'd have exhaustion. Mm. Alright. Alright. There we go, just getting some dice out, because that's the one thing I forgot to do this session! Yay! Mm -hmm. Nice. Alright. So that was... Uh, immediately, as the day starts, there's a random encounter roll! Yay! Oh boy. <laughs> Hooray! Iron King pops up from under the ground. <laughs> yeah, surprise! This giant Iron King managed to sneak up on you with a natural 20! You hear this clank, clank, clank! Oh, that must be the wind! I pitched. 
unholy screaming. All right. <laughs> riding a Tarrasque, because that's like the most terrifying thing I can think of. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you uh, you keep on walking. Uh, this is this isn't really uh, a random encounter. It's more like description. That's what it landed on. Uh, mm. Because it's still early in the morning, you can still kind of catch the fading outline of a red moon uh, as it slowly fades away into daylight. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's pretty. Does that mean anything? Like, comes to say, or magic-wise? I was going to say, could that be taken as a sign of things to come? Or? Make a religion check. Oh, oh boy. Oh, red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Red sky in morning? Hmm. Uh, this definitely right. wasn't I don't, why I, have, I don't know why <laughs> I had the to jump that. Uh, Corellian also wanted to do it, so we'll say Corellian was helping. Okay. Um, red moons can be taken for a lot of things. Uh, like, they're usually harvest moons is one very common across many cultures. Sign and harvest moons mean, oh, that's that's great. Farming's going to be great. Too bad it wasn't all that great for Sheep Vale, unless you want to interpret harvest in a very different and very morbid way. <laughs> a reaping. Mm. Well, the cosmos usually likes to be ironic, so. So there you go. Well, not ironic, but sort of that ironic. seems that seems reasonable. Mm. The cosmos no, sometimes likes to be an out. asshole. That's the word. Yeah. Asshole. <laughs> Mal just lets out a very heavy passive aggressive sigh. Okay. Uh, so we're moving hex to the top left. No, top right. Cool. Uh, you're passing by the town? Yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Alright. That was another <laughs> random encounter. Jeez. Yummy. Uh, the dunes here in this uh, part of the desert, they rise and fall pretty smoothly, yielding to your footfalls. You get the feeling this is a fairly well-traveled area. Um... As we're passing by, is the town particularly close nearby? Can we see it or anything like that? Um, each of these hexes represents several miles. Uh, right. Given that you have a map of the world that is fairly accurate, you know the town is there. But unless you get lucky when looking across several miles of desert, you can't see it from where you are. Um, are, are there... Hmm. Crumbs. I'm yeah, just thinking, is there any... To to the town, though, do we? It's not that, it's just travel... I'm worried that there's a, there's a fucking Minotaur King about the place, and they might not know. You have a point there. Um... Well, we did send we did send word we to, sent our constitu- the... uh, to our constituency, who will undoubtedly spread the word to all he seems fit. The town that was attacked was a small, unknown little sheep... Uh, seaside town kind of style thing, but this is an enormous city. I don't think it's in as much of a danger. I, I'll have to agree. I mean, taking a small hamlet in the middle of nowhere is something, but no matter your power, you really have to think before you make an assault on, you know, an actual city. <laughs> I thought you said manlet. <laughs> like only dream. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the Iron King attacking a solitary small man. <laughs> no, no, with us. Yeah, Trevlon walks up to the Iron King. Um, hello, excuse me there. Oh, no. <laughs> Clobbered immediately. Oof. Literally turned to uh, man dust. Thrown into the ocean. As as you discuss this, uh, Snellku looks over, looks at the map. Yeah, this is accurate. That would be Blind Vault. I think they've got a, a couple more defenses than a small hamlet in the middle of nowhere. Mm. I suppose that makes sense. Let's just continue going. All right. All right. Fair enough. Cool. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. You reach the land bridge, separating the northern and southern halves of Irion, just as the horses start to get exhausted. Mmm. Woo! Um... What do we do to fix the exhaustion, or is it just... I will pat the horses and cast Lesser Restoration on each one, because I feel bad for them. Alright. 
you magically use three of your spell slots to heal the horses so they can keep on marching. And while it's appreciated, you get the sense of looks in their eyes like, oh god, we still have to march. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh god. So, the because they're still marching at a fast pace, that is still a level of exhaustion for the horses. Good job. Instead of two. two. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's not do that anymore. <laughs> let's give them some rest time. I mean, yeah, we'll be on the, we'll be on the land bridge. I'm, I'm satisfied. Yeah. To give them a rest if you guys need to feel like it. <laughs> All right. Uh, you've gotten to the other side, but the land bridge is, uh, traveled enough and enough established that setting up camp here, you feel like you'd have plenty of warning should something come your way. You can definitely nice. rest up here. Nice. Fucking metal. All right. You settle down. I'll take... And make camp. I'll take one of the watches. Or I'll take first watch. Uh, I can, I can take second. Out of principle, Thavagath doesn't take watches anymore. He's useless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would actually maybe prefer to sleep tonight, if that's all right. I'll take two yeah. if you don't mind. If... If you like. I would not take two. Then you'd gain a level no. of exhaustion from staying up. Fred, what about you, Mel? Sure. You, you, you I'll take fat, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> okay. All right, so, Momo, you're on first watch. Make a perception mm -hmm. check. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at me go. Uh, nice. <laughs> You're you're a little more on edge than before after being attacked by minotaurs in the middle of the night, so you are very, very careful on watch, and you are very certain nothing of interest happens during your watch. Um, by the way, out of character out um how are we handling the the cards this today? Uh oh yes. We're still in Camp Streamix where Kyle has given an absurd amount of money. So <laughs> We are going to be drawing oh. cards at some point, just whenever I find it's funny. Oh, <laughs> Yay! Cool. All right. And then, Trevlon, you're on watch. All right. Uh, perception, yeah? Yes. Yep, yep. Eatus Megitus, here we go. <laughs> Woo! He used my thing! He used his own variation. You see, Megitus. All right. Uh, Trevlon... You're always tired. You're used to staying up well into the night. You look around. You don't yeah. see anything happening. Fabulous. Uh, and then I believe it was Malafane on last watch. Yep. Yeah. yep. All right. Like I said before, Landbridge is pretty well traveled. Pretty well. Uh, known to be a place where things happen. So it's not like something's going to come up in the middle of the night. The night is completely quiet. Woo! Hmm. All right. You wake up at the start of a new day. I think we should get a move on quickly, just in case. Uh, yeah. Are the horses all right? First, the horses the still have one level of exhaustion. How do we fix that, by the way? Uh, a day of them not doing anything or lesser restoration and then don't do anything to give them more exhaustion. I mean, it is a fairly, well, relatively safe spot around here. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to just letting them rest for a day. Yeah, I mean, hell. By rest, by rest, do you mean like no action whatsoever or just like a gentle trot, like a one hex for the day? Um... I'll let you get away with one hex for the day. Hell yeah. That's, All right. that's some progress. It makes no RP sense to just stay in the one spot. Alright. Very gently, you urge the horses on past the land bridge. Morning passes without incident. Uh, that fell off the table. <laughs> uh, in the afternoon, though, as you travel... You hear some footsteps coming up behind you, and some of the footsteps sound heavier than others, like there's someone wearing heavy armor with a chunk, 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 walking uh, towards you. Like, um, 
I, I travel on and turn around to see who the heck's that. Uh, yeah, that we'll also have a look. Cool. Uh, behind you, you <laughs> see some familiar faces. Three elves from the Shis and Thay. Uh, leading them is Ravanala, the clank, uh, and the clank, clank, clanks seem to be coming from Omarin, full in his plate armor flamethrower combination. Bringing up the rear is Solana, who sees you first and gives a, a quick wave your way as I'm going to pull up their art one by one, because Uprising art is fantastic. Yay! Yay! I love them all so much. Yeah, I like them. Big fan. Goral. What a frickin' Goral. What a Goyle. What a woman. Goyle. Goyle. What a man. There he is. There he is. Flame it's Flamethrower Flame. McGee. He was Flamethrower like, oh. McGee. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. There's another Goyle. And then another good Goyle. Good our very, well, not our very first, but one of our first encounters. Yep. All right. Yeah. Seeing as you're going a uh, very slow pace, the elves eventually catch up to you. Uh, Ravanala gives a quick nod. Well met. Uh, what would you be doing in the north of Erion? Well, as a matter of fact, we are doing a little job, um, heading up to the to the north to try and get to Merdeal. There is some really unpleasant business going on there that we're going to fix. Ah, I see, I see. Well, best of luck in that venture, I suppose. Uh, regrettably, we are not headed that way. Where are you off to? Uh, we happen to be heading to Demdor. It's high time we investigated the, uh, the Oreads. I believe presence would be a fairly good euphemism for them that were left in the Sacred Grove. Right. Um, about that. I would advise skepticism when in thinking that the Oread, the actual people of Demdor, their government, they, that they had a hand in this. I... We've been dealing with a lot of stuff recently. A lot of things that just seem like there's a set, there's parties at play that are just trying to it's just ruffle feathers. Um, if you wanted my advice, I'd keep an eye out for either any sign of plague lords. That's definitely one. And um, well, I know this might sound a bit weird, but scarlet snakes. Uh, Ravanala slowly nods, but then says, "I." Don't believe the Scarlet Snakes are going to be an issue. Uh, you see, they were wiped they? out long ago. Oh, uh, about that, we've been... <sighs> Truth she... is, we've been seeing a lot of evidence to the contrary. Uh, she raises an eyebrow. Such as? We recently did a job in, um, well, Port Miranda of all places, and, well, there was a, an attack. There was a lot of terrible, terrible things happening in Port Morandu, but one of them, well, it looks like the handiwork was very much a, Salix, a Scarlet Snake's planning. Okay, it's but... Yes, I asked what evidence you had, and then your evidence was it looked like the Scarlet Snakes. You'll understand oh, right, if my scepticism extends to that <laughs> as well. I, okay, apologize uh, And that. Omar in the background <laughs> just laughs and slaps his knee. Um, well, if anything else, it might be worth looking out for the Underhill King. Uh, he's been having it out for the Oreads and was actually pretty manic when it came to trying to seize the part of the mountain. Hmm. So that might be worth looking into. Uh, uh, Solana offers up, I've heard the Underhill King is mostly concerned with Oreads and dwarves. Uh, keeps to the west of Arian. I'm not sure what interest he'd have in the Sacred Grove, to be honest. Oh, well, could be an idea that he was trying to stir up some business just so there's, you know, two people fighting the same folk. But, yeah, it's just, he's Certainly gonna be there and he's gonna be annoying. Yeah. Um, Alex, was it uh, the Shards of Pottery that indicated that it was a Scarlet Snake business that were from the, uh, oh, what was it, the, the disease that made the guy basically the choke on? The, uh, the... Was right. it the explosives or was it the bile? Uh, the I, I think, actually, I think it was the vial. The vial, you're right. Uh, I believe uh, the pottery was of elven design. Ah, oh, shit, right, I see. 
Fuck, what was it that indicated the Scarlet Snakes? Because I remember something it was something. Shit. Ah, my memory is terrible. I'm going to have to look this up. Because <laughs> until then, there is no evidence. Damn it. Well, uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for your theories. Uh, if you'd like, since it seems you're settling down here, we could join you for extra watch. Hell, that would be lovely. It's been That'll a while since we've been able to talk to all of you. Of course. Uh, so, uh, the elves start settling down, helping make camp. Uh, Omarin looks up and does a double take upon seeing uh, Zutzag and Snalgu with you. Uh, raises a hand, Ravanala says, don't, and he just puts it back down. <laughs> I'm gonna agree with the don't. <laughs> you give several looks of don't Omarin's way as he just grumbles and goes back to setting up camp. Cool. Alright, so, uh, the she and they will happily take one of the watch periods. Uh, the rest of you you get two more among you. Nice. I slept cool. last night. All right. So that's Karelian and someone else. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take one. one of them. I need to make a prayer anyways, so... I'll let Mal have it. Okay. All right. So. She sent Thay's watch. Nothing happens that they alert you of, so you're pretty sure it's all good. Oof. Cool. Uh, then Corellian? I'll let Mosca sleep, because she was also run to the bone the other day. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you're a little distracted thinking of other things, but you're pretty sure nothing happens during your watch, Corellian. Alright, thanks. Cool. And then Malifane. You got it. Okay. And that was a result for something happening. So Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright. Uh yeah. The air smells very strongly of mud tonight. Like, you cannot help but catch a whiff of that on the air as you uh, settle into watch, start making your prayers. It's it's pretty damn stinky. Is there... Do I notice a potential source? Um, around you, no. But you get the sense to look at the map to see if there's any particular thing that could be causing the smell. Uh, directly to the west are the Zufon tar pits, and they're probably bursting and bubbling today, tonight, rather, for some strange reason. Zufon tar pits, you said? Zufon. I typoed the name of my own damn location. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> and I did it again! <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> right the fuck at it! <laughs> Why you absolute zafoon. Love you, Alex. <laughs> you Love fool. You, Alex. you absolute zafoon. <laughs> and as you're <laughs> and as you're smelling this, a card appears in your hand. <laughs> oh no. Fuck. Uh, I guess I'm drawing first then. Yep. Okay. Do it, you zafoon. There we go. You absolute zafoon. <laughs> I declare that we only use that from uh, now on. I don't remember what the owl does. Uh, I think it's good. Yeah, the owl is pretty good, if I recall. It's like similar to the vision, in that mm -hmm. it gets you information. Uh, let me double check. Um, the owl, on your next rest, you get a vision of the future, and you're resting. Oh, <laughs> so how about that? Okay. Uh, let me uh, look at what's happening so that I can uh, get you a vision of the future. I guess I'm going to open up the journal now. It's been forever since I've written in this thing. Uh, you, you settle down to rest. And as you do, 
you uh, you have a vision of uh, this dark, vaguely humanoid figure walking through uh, dimly lit corridors with the drip of water, and then the drip of water turns into this like rush and gurgle of water, like it's all around him. And as he steps past what was a window, something that resembles light uh, flickers across his face, and you see that he might be humanoid, but his skin has, like, this sickly purple film about it, and he's got tentacles on his lower on his lower oh. head. He's got a tentacle beard. <laughs> oh, no. And oh, that's no. what you dream of before morning comes. I see. Oh, man. I love whatever that might be. No idea what it could be, though. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh. Uh, uh, Solana uh, sees you having a tough time, Malafane, looks over, raises an eyebrow. Something vexes you? <sighs> Just... Very strange dreams as of late, I suppose. I am always a fan of listening to those. Go on, tell me all the details. Probably means something terrible is going to happen. Uh, which one would you like to hear about? I guess there was that one time where I was in the middle of a dungeon and there were these strange humanoid figures and I was fighting an archer or something like that. And then there was right. this halfling bard who was just sort of talking about her tits and all that and... Oh, wait, wrong dream. You have to dream now, genius. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I remember this... This figure that was just walking down this corridor. It was rather dark. Uh, there was this rush of water, and... Then, the moment that this light flashed around his face... He... Uh, he looked... He didn't look natural. It, he looked... Sick, and he looked purple and it looked like he had some something wrong with his face like like he was primordial almost like tentacles about his 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 face or something like that that's the last thing i can remember at least and as everyone Wait. listens omar and says okay but go back to that one with the tits <laughs> <laughs> Um, would I be able to roll something, Alex, to determine what the hell he just dreamed about, if any, if, it, if it's just like a weird vision of that cooked up by a fever dream, or if it's something that actually exists? Arcana. Arcana. Woo. Arcana. Yep. <laughs> wow, it sounds like someone must have been huffing the tar pit stench. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I try? Absolutely. Go on, you can do it, brother. Mm, sounds like someone must have been hopping the tar pit stench. <laughs> uh, it almost sounds like you've been hopping tar pit stench. I was about to say, the tar pit stench is really thick today. <laughs> yeah, like, I've, I've got this thing covering my face and I can still smell it. It's pretty damn bad. I hope that's oh. yes. Before I forget, not to interrupt your strange fever dream, Mal, I remembered why I thought the Scarlet Snakes were involved, Solana. Um, so, rub is, when we were in Port Miranda, we did find pottery. We found a broken up thing that a unfortunate guard, I think, either got thrown at or tripped into. Um, contained some pretty nasty bilge bills, and he could have died if it wasn't for the fact that this one, and uh, Trevlon points to Momo. Saved his life. Mm, most impressive. Says Ravenala. The trick was that... The trick was that... The pot was made... Um, it was elven make. Um, and... We, I honestly couldn't think of anybody who would want to kill somebody at random to cause chaos apart from them. That was the reason. I know it's not, like, very conclusive proof, but it was an idea. Uh, Ravanala listens to this and as you get to I couldn't think of anyone who would do this aside from them she sighs Shadlon, what you have is just a theory nothing more I'm sorry to say that that's not enough case to assume that the Scarlet Snakes are not in fact wiped out uh, Fair enough In any case if you hear about any 
um, you know, traditional elven alchemists who are doing some really nasty stuff, keep an eye out because they are not up to anything good either way. Salada slowly looks over at Omarin, who notices the glance. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was about. I, I will say, not fire. Probably not fire. More like something that has to do with disease and pestilence. <clears throat> okay, N- probably none of you. That's all. We'll, well, that's what we'll say. <laughs> I, I was. I was hinting that we know of another elven alchemist who deals with disease and pestilence, who is currently in jail. Oh, right, him. Yeah. Mm, I have a. Th- mm, I thought about that, but I'll explain it to you later. I don't think so. I'll... Let's get going. All right. All right. Yeah. We can. We can talk more about this on the road. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you and the kobolds uh, get back in the carriage and cart. Uh, the elves politely decline a ride because it's very cramped in there. It is. Before we split off, I would like to name drop the certain loudest in the world. The what? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, All right. If you are in, uh, it, you know, going to Demtor, if you happen to run into a oh. certain Oread who. Uh, your bustingly loud voice very you enthusiastic. You are talking of has... Prince Zordan? Yes. yes. We <laughs> are familiar. He's we... a very, he's a very nice chap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I said hi. Uh, they Legitimate. slowly Legitimate. nod as you mention his niceness. Uh, listen, I know it doesn't... We worked with the guy for a good little bit before we continued on our merry adventures. Um... Zordan, from the time we spoke to him, he didn't seem to have any ill will towards elves or anything like that, and he genuinely seemed like he wanted to help his people also, and others. Also, if it weren't for him, we would have been stuck down a mine shaft. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah. how can I put it? He seemed to have the disposition of a very happy golden retriever. <laughs> he has his heart in his sleeve. Uh, he wouldn't, as you he all talk about hurt. this... I rolled an insight check with Ravenala, and she rolled a natural 20. So she's pretty sure you're not making shit up. Uh, well, uh, we shall consider that once we meet up with him. Fantastic. Wait, you're, are you actually are you actually meeting up with him, like, as a, as a first port of call? Well, I mean, if anyone would know what the Oriada are up to in matters outside of their state, it would be the royalty, would it not? That's true. true. Well, that's very fair. Oh, one more piece of advice. Um, what was it? Was it the primal sector who were the assholes that we had to deal with when we were in Demdor? Yes. Was, um, yeah. Omar primal... was like, no, I heard it was the dark sector. Uh, Solana's no, like, no. I thought it was the illusion sector. Uh, Robin Hall oh, was like, can we agree that there are assholes in all of them? Well, there are particular assholes in the primal sector, so... Keep that in mind. Well, I heard good things about the primal sector. The elves argue amongst themselves. Oh, God. <laughs> no. uh, politics. politics. Ravenel was like, oh, God, politics. you set them off. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, which way are you going? Uh... Top right? Top right. Great. They continue yeah. to argue amongst themselves as you ride near them. Because <laughs> they're also heading that way. That's the quickest way to damn door. All right. Early morning passes without incident. Where to now? Uh, uh, top, top right. right. Could, they I continue could, to could argue a, about the Orient. I was going to say, we could technically make a pit stop at them. And they, con- t- yeah. and they continue to argue amongst themselves until late morning comes, and they agree, you know what, maybe they're all assholes. And <laughs> Snalku was like, oh, thank God they're done. <laughs> Krellian's sort of like casually riding on Moscow like head propped up on one hand just sort of listening to uh, highly entertained by mm. the entire thing this is Look, great Omarin was very insistent about his particular ideas alright continuing to head to Demdor making a pit stop or are you just gonna split off uh let's mm. I thought there as soon no. as we can on the, I'm on the not door. stopping in Demdor. Remember uh, yeah, the, the state that we left things in in Demdor? Oh, yeah. 
they probably don't like us mm. very much. Yeah, same in the <laughs> other place. It. Let's just keep going. All right. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll part ways here. As much as I'd love to. Let's just, yeah. You bid fond farewell to your elven companions <laughs> as you split off, and they head towards Demdor, and you head east towards uh, kind of swampy land uh, once you get out of God. the desert and hill areas. Uh, not quite as swampy and stinky as the tar pits to the west, but it's still, like, moist and not fun to walk through. Well, is there lizard men? <laughs> no, the lizard men are to the south. Okay, that's that's what I wanted we to make sure We good to that, boys. Alright, I'm assuming we still east? That. Yeah, cool. uh, I guess. Because uh, you're going back at a fast pace, I want to guess, now that the horses are rested up. Yeah, Cool. Yeah. All right. So, you uh, get out of the swampland, climb up onto a hillside, and make camp there. I'll take first watch. Cool. I'll take one. I'll take third. Great. Great. Okay. So, Momo, make a perception check. I oh. fall asleep. <laughs> you do a big pass out. Oh. <laughs> that you do, oh. Momo. Oh, no. That you do. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, so, Momo, you fall asleep. And as you do, you start dreaming. You're in this dark kind of arid place your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness and it's it's a cave of some kind fairly warm but like still very dark and there's not a lot of moisture all around you fumble about through the dark and you hear like this chittering sound something moving something talking you're not quite sure uh and you, curious and having nothing else to do, having no survival instinct, evidently, because you're a natural one, you Oof. continue to uh, follow the sound until you get to this barely lit chamber where you can see three figures. Uh, two of them are humanoid. One is almost completely in shadow, and another is lying down on the floor, kind of huddled up. And oh, no. Standing over him is this large figure, like, uh, oh, no. at least two to three times the size of a man. And, oh, no. like, at your eye level are several spider legs. It's like this big old spider uh, abdomen and torso. And you look oh, up no. a little bit, and there is a humanoid body where the thorax of the spider would be. And this larger figure is just shuffling back and forth very quickly, almost very angrily, and you hear it speak with this chitter behind its voice. What do you mean we are leaving this one? The shadowy standing figure answers, I mean, there is nothing left he can offer us. If he did not break under the slavery of the Minotaurs, if he did not break under the toxins of the Plague Lords, if he did not break under Steyavana's machinations, and if he could not break under you, there is one conclusion. He has nothing more he can truly offer us. A shame. I suppose we'll have to seek other methods. And you look to see who the hell they're talking about. The... The figure that's lying down on the floor, it's an elf with uh, long, long white hair, silvery robes, and he appears to be missing a finger on his right hand. <laughs> Momo, I'm going to need oh, you to no. draw a card. Is that oh, no. Is? oh no. Oh my god. I'm going to need you to draw a card, Momo. I don't want a drug. I don't like it. All right. Oh, oh that's not terrible. The foreign trader. Uh, and as you step forward, clink, 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 a couple of gems fall to the floor. 
and the chat stops. Oh. It would seem we have a visitor, says the first shadowy figure. <laughs> and uh, the larger one, the, the spider-legged thing, slowly turns around, her spidery legs shuffling to face your direction. As she leans down, you get a better look now. Uh, there appears to be like this chitinous beetle shell over a vaguely humanoid female body. Uh, some tentacle-like appendages protruding from the chest. Bee-like wings on her back and the head of a stag beetle drooling this icky green ichor as she looks down and hisses. You, son of the sky! She shuffles backwards, picks up the elf, hoists him into the air, and as you can... You look into its face, and you see that is indeed Arias. Oh my god! You were warned, she says, holding Arias up to her head, opening her jaws wide, forcing his hand to extend open, and biting down on a finger. No, don't do it! And you wake up with a start, screaming. <laughs> the face of this creature burned into your mind. Ooh. <laughs> My, that is... Okay. Not like. You know what? I'm impressed. Uprising made something that Phil doesn't want to fuck. It's very... Oh. Well, Oh wait, no, it does have boobies. Oh, yeah, oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, at this point, I just accepted it. It's fine. <laughs> I don't say anything until this you make it. This is the universe we're living in. call me out? Fuck you, I'll call you out, you bullshit. I was gonna say, I feel just trying at this point. <clears throat> oh. Um, presumably we hear Momo screaming. You do indeed hear Momo screaming! <laughs> Travel on fucking books it towards Yeah, them. same for Malifane. Yeah, that's how we got to it. Alright, uh, Zutzag and Snalku also <laughs> quickly run over to you. Yeah, I mean, same. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Is there something out there? Did you see something? What happened? It was Arias! It... There was this... There was... A giant spider thing and he bit off his hand! I... Okay. Des... Spider thing... What, what do you mean? Describe it. It had the the body of of a spider, the torso of a person, and it's it's it had wings and it 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 had giant mandibles like a beetle and it just it just, just bit off his hand. Uh, Would Malifane know what this is? Roll history with advantage, because Snalgu also looks deep and thought at this. She's also trying to remember. History with advantage. Okay. You got this, buddy. You're good at history. Yes! yes All you right. are, baby. Uh, as Snalgu starts uh, like drawing a picture with her staff in, in the dirt as to what it resembles, a picture instantly comes to your mind, Malafane. This is Zunkira, the Hive Queen of the Swarm. Uh, they... As far as you are aware, they only recently became a major threat in Irion, taking up residence in the wastes of Dragatha, where no one wants to go. They are horrifying, horrifying bug monstrosities, and you fought some of them back in the mines at Demdor. This is their queen! Oh no, oh no, 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 no. You're saying oh, a lot of no's, that's mate. That's it! That's it! That's what it looked like! Oh, it was says Snellgoo. Mal looks to Snellgoo and... You're thinking what I'm thinking, vision? kid? Do you think... I'm... I'm very worried about this. 
I okay. I am hearing a lot of crying and nose. I have no idea what that is. And Trevlon is very perturbed looking as he sort of switches from Mal to, to Snalgu, just looking pleading. Remember those creatures that we fought back in Demdor? Those Mm -hmm. Which ones? The little insectoid things. Oh, the creepy fuckers. And the massive ones? Yeah, I remember that. This is essentially a monarch. It's their queen. Jesus. Mm. If the swarm's gotten this far north, I hate to think what's going to happen to the rest of area. Momo, did you say that this thing warned you before? Yeah. It makes sense now. Oh my god! God. That's what has been. That's what kidnapped Marius! (laughs) He starts like. Uncontrollable breathing, almost hyperventilating. <laughs> uh, Trevlon, I mean, think like, for a go... second. Think for yeah. a second. What was the? What was the? What was the message that the clairvoyant received back in? Back in. I'm blanking out on the location. Demdor. In in Demdor, something about losing a finger. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. So. You're telling me that Orias is in captivity by this thing. Momo was... looks up and like... tears in his eyes like nods. What? Oh, Jesus. What else did you see? I saw someone else and said it, it started explaining that why Orias was useless to this thing. And then... It said that there were other things that it could do. I don't remember. I just, I just saw a bias and then... That's... Who? <laughs> Momo. And Trevlon sort of puts both his hands on his shoulders and looks him in the eyes and tries to steal him and basically go and try to d- take deep breaths. <laughs> you... Do you think you recognized this other guy? Because I gotta admit, I don't know many people who can happily chat with things like that. Anything at all memorable about him that you. Anything. What would I have to roll to see if I do? He was completely in shadow, Momo. You didn't see anything. It was completely in shadow. I couldn't see a thing. <sighs> Great. So, not only is the person who took Orias in league with other people, oh, it's not just, oh, (laughs) this makes things a lot more complicated. Oh, Oh. how how did you see that? I don't know. I I think I dozed off while I was on watch and then, and then I... So I dreamt all of that, and then I woke up, and you guys were here, and all that happened. I don't even know how it happened. I don't know that why would, it happened. That would make sense. The last communication where you were warned was through the was through the dreams here. Uh... Yeah, but the trick there was that we were in that instance we were actively peering into somebody else's dreams. This time, it seems like it seems like it came to him. Can I roll an arcana or a history check to see how, if is there's any logical explanation as to why that happened to Momo? Go for an arcana check. Can I uh, also see? Yeah, give advantage. York. 15. You know, the universe is just so fucked up sometimes. Sometimes this just happens. You... You just don't know enough to make a good guess as to why this happened to Momo. You try with all your might, but it's just... You don't have the evidence. Uh, I wish I knew. God, no, it's like this. I wish we had an actual wizard in the party or something. God. Ugh. I don't understand <clears throat> magic sometimes. I wish I knew more than I did. Yeah, I'm not exactly a wizard, per se, says Smallku. Uh, so, so, good news is, and Travelon tries to smile at Momo, we know where he is, 
And we know he's still alive. Um, bad news is, we know where he is, and we don't know how long that's going to be for. Oh, Ever dear. the optimist. I know. Oh, no, no. And Trevon is, like, starting to shake himself up. No. This doesn't change things. We're going to get him. One way or the other, we're going to get him. We're going to find it, we're going to kick its ass, and we're going to get Arias back, and I... <sighs> Alex, could I tell if Arias was dead or alive? All right. One detail I left out of the dream that would have made it very clear. He started screaming the instant his finger got bit off. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> I wish I didn't ask. Mm. Hooray. <sighs> okay, so now what? We got terrible, scary insect people, dragons, another third party, maybe even the Scarlet Snakes to deal with. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. God, it almost makes me wish I never set foot off that boat. <sighs> mm. Snalku looks over at you, Corellian, slowly nods. Crawling just sort of, like, gives her a look, sort of tilts their head, but nods back. So what do we do now? We... There is... Trevlon would like to, to see if there's any feasible way that five people could go into a hive like that and win. Is there anything I could roll to determine whether or not that's possible? <laughs> um, make like an, an intelligence check. check. Intelligence. You got it. All right. So, strictly speaking, you're not five people, uh, but you discount Zutzag and Snogu on the, chance, the probable chance that they would not accompany you to the hive. Uh, on the chance that you know where the hive is, which people have a fairly good idea, but not a precise location... You would be heavily outnumbered and without some way of counteracting the hundreds, if not thousands, of giant flesh-eating insects. You'd still have to deal with that. And you don't yeah. know what that can do to you. So you think that going down there right now is a terrible idea. We need to plan ahead, because there's no way that the five of us are going to be able to go down there and win, I don't think. We need help, we need a plan, and the best thing we can do right now is, firstly, and Trevlon looks to Momo and looks him in the eyes, we have to keep hope. Orias isn't dead. We can still get him, and we can still save him. And the second thing we need to do is figure out what kills insects and what kills them good, because that's what we're going to need if we're going to do this. <sighs> I, had a, I had a thought, but the creature in the sacred grove was an insect. It was a carrion moth, a very large one. And there are multiple of them. Do you think that maybe it could be connected to the swarm, or...? What would make you think that? Insects? Hmm. I mean, I mean... It's a stretch. Never mind. It's, it's fair. No, that's fair. We don't know many other giant insect things that want to hurt people. I don't think it's that much of a stretch. Huh. <sighs> I suppose that that's the thing. If that's the case, we know that the Plague Lords had something to do with that and we're letting that thing do its business, which would mean that the Plague Lords are involved in this as well. There. Oh, boy. <sighs> One thing at a time. Yeah. <sighs> One thing at a time. I mean, that's a stupid question to ask, but yeah. do you think you'll be... Yeah, thanks. Uh, do you think you'll be at least slightly okay the rest of the night? I mean, I'm taking second watch anyway. I could stay up with you. 
he looks up at uh, um, Corellian and just like nods. Corellian Crowley, nods back and just sort of like sort of like pats the ground next to Momo. I presume we're all sort of like yeah. around Yeah, they're all sort of gathered and, together. Yeah, yeah. big hug. And, yeah, call, calls Mosca over and be like you should, you should call for, for Beats Calls. <laughs> Momo just like you know that gif of Homer Simpson falling back into yes. the bushes? Yep. That's mm-hmm. Momo. <laughs> uh, God's above with that is into damn mood. Fall into the fur. I am bad at emotions. This is why I have a stoat. <laughs> it can do the emotioning <laughs> for me. That it can... is already it is already clung to the thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. As several of you cling to the emotional support stoat, uh Corellian goes to take watch. Snogu says, Well, I am probably not going to get back to sleep after that. Uh, mind if I join you? No. Not at all. She gives a quick nod of thanks, sits down beside you. You've got advantage on watch, because Snogu's also there. Ooh, all right. Hey. Hey. All right. So, the rest of your watch is completely uneventful compared to uh, Momo's watch. So the rest of the party slowly gets back to sleep. Uh, in the middle of it, uh, Snellagoo uh, kind of looks your direction. So, got off the boat, huh? <coughs> Rolling just sort of like tilts their head, sighs, and their shoulders slump, and they uh, drop into draconic. Actually, uh, not common anymore. And says, "It's not a lie." Uh, uh, she also speaks in draconic. Lying's not your strong suit. I can tell. No, I'd rather prefer to just. Not even mention. I figured this would happen. I've been waiting for the past few days. Well, you're not gonna get a whole lot of other chance to tell him, you know? I mean, I understand that, Snogu, but you're right. You're always right about things like this, but... It's just that... Call me selfish. I know I'm selfish more than probably anyone else does, but it's not... I never thought that I would have the opportunity to feel like I was part of something, I suppose. That I wasn't complete, total fuck up that I wasn't a total coward and I just want I just want to I just want to hold on to that for as long as I can and I know the longer I don't say anything the worse it will be but God's above you know any other kobold would take offense at the whole coward that doesn't belong to anything thing yeah but you you know what I'm getting at it's not like I'm going to be welcomed back with open yeah. <clears throat> you know, good on you for trying. Jumped up a little shit I knew, wouldn't have even thought of crossing the land bridge, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, a lot, of, uh, a lot of crazy shit happens when your life flips upside down and you suddenly find yourself doing things that you never thought you'd be able to before. I will admit well you're not wrong Uh, and she hears the rustling of I think it was Mal who was going to take last watch I thought it was me wasn't it it was you Trevlon she hears Trevlon rustling switches back to common 
Well, see you in the morning, kid. I sleep well. Uh, and Snogu, uh, walks past Trevlon, watches all yours. Thanks. Uh, Trevlon looks from Snogu to Corellian, so sort of quizzically, and goes, You seem to be making fast friends. Why wouldn't I? I don't know. It's not to be rude or anything, but, you know, it's sometimes hard to talk to people. God knows talking to new people's one thing. Yeah, very true. I, um, can't anticipate what'll happen when we actually get to the city. I know you're not f from there, but what's it like? Do you have any idea? I don't know much about kobold society to begin with. What do you think it would be like when we get there? Most, um, most kobolds aren't like, uh, aren't like me. We'll just say that. Hmm. Well, if they are like you in any sort of way, I'll, I'll just say this. If any of the people we meet there are as dearly decent as you are, my friend, then I think we'll be fine. So, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it'll be a very interesting adventure either way. <laughs> interesting is definitely the word for it. You're far too kind. Hope the watch is anything. Oh, I'm sure I will not get any terrifying nightmares. Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Alright. So Trevlon, make a perception check. Hell yeah. Alright. Uh I'm going to make a perception check if I can find it on my character sheet. Here we go. <sighs> okay. That's a performance check. Fuck. <laughs> you play a little bit uh, of harmonica as you go to sleep. Snogu says, shut the fuck up! Well, I'm just going to do a little bit of harmonica. It's, you know, I don't get it. Work, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Aside from playing harmonica and angering the grumpy kobold, nothing happens on watch. Right. All right. Morning comes. Okay. Right. No nightmares this time. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Uh, Zutzag offers up, should be just a straight shot east, which means we will be going through swamps, and that's gonna suck, but here we go! Nice. Lovely. Do you have any recommendation above what we might find in terms of, you know, dangerous creatures while we're there, Zutzag? Um, there's a dragon? I'm fucking, apart from the bit, I think we'll notice that. I mean more the stealthy, sneaky ones that might piss in the ass or something. Um, there are kobolds? Will kobolds bite us in the arse unprovoked? Uh, wow, he... are you implying something? <laughs> he starts <laughs> to think. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, Vuku always has been a little bit weird. All right, well, um, consider me not keen for a kobold arse biting, so I'll keep my rear checked for that thing. Uh, let's not do that. All right. So, uh, early morning passes without incident. Late morning passes without <laughs> incident. Uh, do, 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 do. You start to head into the Greater Hawk Steps, uh, getting finally out of Swampland and into more like a kind of grassy prairie area. Uh, the wind starts picking up around here. Uh, and uh, as you continue walking through, looking around, you hear a very familiar voice. Good morning, everyone! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I love it! <laughs> 
are very oh happy. My God. And you look over and Zordan is there looking incredibly happy with a little retinue of some other Oread. Uh, like, they look to be dressed in bardic clothing and be carrying drums standing behind them. Oh my goodness, hello, <laughs> sir. <laughs> what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I thought, you know, you didn't want to come back to the north. Well, it's less a problem of wanting to and needing to. We've got a job, you see. Ah! I, uh, ah, might I ask what that job is? Dragon. Uh, yeah, you see the dragon that has been flying about recently? I haven't! <laughs> This, well, there you go. Oh, There's okay. <laughs> Great. I was just over here investigating uh, what was making a bunch of sinkholes and, you know, cave but if it's a dragon, that explains a lot. Has it, wait, has the dragon been making sinkholes and caverns? Well, cave ins. I suppose it is my accent that made it sound like caverns. Gotcha. Huh. Also, well. uh, you will be happy to know that after much debate and much punching people, we have finally determined that you are in fact not to blame for the Heart of Stone doing whatever the hell it did. So congratulations! You're not wanted for death in Damdor! Uh, Yay. that's very good. That's Thank you. That's really good to hear. Thank you. Uh, are we wanted for anything else? Um, vandalism? Oh yeah, we did that, uh, didn't we? Wait, I mean, I'm a prince, I could probably pardon you for that. Um... Listen, you know, we're not talking about the the hole in Padron's wall, are you? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, speaking of which, he is currently our primary suspect slash uh, person of interest as to what happened to the Heart of Stone, considering dwarves Whoa. apparently were wait, in the mine wait, and he's what? a dwarf. Um, that... Um, I... I... Uh, Prince Aldan, pardon me being impetuous or rude or anything like that, but you might want to put a stop to that, because I don't... Uh, listen, when we were down in the mine and we and we saw what the Heart of Stone was up to and we saw the explosives that were near it, it wasn't dwarven make. Carlion sort of, like, coughs loudly. Can I have a word, Trevlon? Really quick. Uh, I... Mm, really, one moment. Really quick. Okay, bye! My sincerest apologies. Carlion sort of, like... We take trouble on a side a little and sort of lower their voice and just we did just send the she's and they you know elves into them door they're trying to find out more maybe pitting them against each other wouldn't be a good idea i'm not trying to put them against each other but if we get an innocent man arrested it's not fucking uh, what do we do what do we do mcpadrick's basically on house arrest yeah but he might be under death if we don't do something Oh, fucking up the heart of stone is not gonna be like a house arrest sort of crime, you know? I have a bad feeling. No, and of course the Underhill King probably fucks off, and Patrick's one of the only dwarves probably stuck there, um, or at least he's the one who can't leave. Well, you know, whatever you think is best. Just wanted to put something on the table, I suppose. I won't. I won't tell him it was the elves that did it, or any elf that did it. Well, we don't I'll know. Just, we don't know. I'll just say that it wasn't... It's likely that it wasn't <coughs> the elves who did it. And it'll be okay, I think. I hope. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tevlon turns back to Prince Ordan. As I was saying, I would be very careful about trying to fr um, put... Um, McPadrick as the person who did this. I don't think the doors are responsible necessarily. The doors were trying to take the Heart of Stone, not mess with it when they were originally trying to, you know, get into the mine. <coughs> if if I were you, when you get back to Demdor, I'd seriously think about possibly thinking of other solutions that aren't McPadrick. Please. So, if it's not the dwarves who did try to mess with the Heart of Stone? I don't think so. I don't think it was the dwarves. He's asking yes, I'm who asking who! My god, Jevlon! I'm deaf! And what? second of all... I'm <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> to be perfectly honest, that's what we're trying to figure out, too. 
there's there's been a lot of fuckery going on in a lot of different places in um in Irion. Port Morandu's had some mess had some stuff messed with it. Um <clears throat> All I would say is that if you hear about anything if you hear about any gang or any group of people or any selection of folks that are trying to make any number of mischief or chaos, look into it. Because the people that we think did something to the Heart of Stone, I have a good suspicion they did some pretty nasty stuff in Port Miranda. They tried to poison a random guard. And I'm pretty sure it was to do some pretty unpl- It was for... Well, it was just to cause some chaos and make people hate each other. I see, says Prince Zordan. Oh, actually, I just remembered, concerning <laughs> Haven, we actually had some Morlock kids uh, come by down south. That's true. They lived around here in the Greater Hawk Steps, and they were, well, they were driven out of their home by Cavens or something, and, well, same dragon rumor. We've heard that she's been around here. Not sure if they're connected, but that's the best I can do, at least. I mean, that does make sense! What I would say um, is this, if if we're going to leave on any parting words. um, Prince Zordan, um, the Iron King, has decided to touch down in Irion, and he raided the village recently. Ah! This will be a worthy yeah. challenge, then! Yeah, if, if you get the chance, defend Demdor and kick the shit out of him. That's oh, my advice. Oh, hell yeah! Yeah. I would also look into whether or not the Minotaurs had anything to do with the Heart of Stone's fuck uppery. If the time, if you managed to get a hold of the people that were down there at the time. Or their, you know, their boss. Which I think was the only king, if I'm not mistaken. It was. Yeah. Probably! Keep... Yeah. If anything, you if you were looking for a prime suspect, I'd advise looking at the mi- the Minotaurs under the Iron King. They'll know something for sure. Okay, he says, turning around. Very odd parting words, considering they didn't say goodbye, but I'll take them! Goodbye! Okay, oh, also goodbye, <laughs> sorry. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Bye! Uh, Stalgu looks over your shoulder. Well, there goes a real bundle of energy. Oh, he's amazing. He Never stops. <laughs> Quite the man. All right. And that's that encounter taken care of. Woo. Right. Great. Oh, boy. Another random oh encounter. Boy. Oh, boy. So, uh, before this happens, just because I think it'll be funny, Atlas, draw a card. <laughs> Draw, uh, draw, uh, draw, uh, here we go. Oh no! Oh no! Alright. Um, yeah, this is one of the patron made ones, as you can tell by the amazing custom handwriting I have done. The perspective. Okay. Can I explain what happened? Never mind, you go ahead, do it. So, uh,. What happens with the perspective is that you and a randomly chosen other member of the party switch proportions for the next hour or so. Uh, originally this was done because uh, the guy who made the perspective wanted to see Momo <laughs> and Thavagath switch proportions. <laughs> this time it's Corellian and Thavagath. <laughs> Yay! Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, this seems awfully familiar. Jesus Christ, how horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> yep. Uh, Corellian, you look like a dragonborn. My precious heft. <laughs> oh no, his heft. <laughs> the heft, it's no, gone. Blavagath looks like Blavagath. Listen, I may not be exceptionally tall, but you'll find a still a bit of muscle on me, at least. I'm fucking scrawny. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, think I mean, I like anyone this. would be scrawny compared to you. But at least you're not as scrawny as Malifane. Think about it this way. <laughs> Think about it this way, Thav. Now that you're smaller, you are at key proportions to punch Mal in the dick square. <laughs> <laughs> you're at dick punching height! 
I rolled a headbutt now. <laughs> you know what? I'm oh, just going to Headbutt? <laughs> okay, nope. that's oh, not man. enough to hit his armor class. So, Thavagath, as you run around trying to headbutt Malifane in the dick, <laughs> as Malifane just like steps back every time, a shadow passes overhead. Very large and very winged. Fuck oh, you, no. fucking kidding me. Uh, uh, Zutzak uh -oh. looks up and is like, ah, shit, and then uh, grabs his cloak, throws it over himself, and hunkers down to where, if you're looking at him, it looks like you're just looking at a rock in the middle of the desert. Uh, oh, should, should we do the same? Hide, hide now. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> hide, 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 says <laughs> Snalku, looking Roll for stealth. anywhere to hide. Roll stealth. Rolling stealth. Uh, this is hey. something. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Malafane, you oh. hide behind. Oh, no. You hide behind the Zutzag rock, and you are basically completely <laughs> hidden. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Oh, <laughs> of no. course, that's the one. Um, I would also like uh, to cast animal. Oh, sorry. What's the, what's the one that? Uh, wild that shape animals. Sorry. Speak Can't with animals. do that until you're druid level two. Is that no. is that wild shape or speak with animals? Uh, it's big wow. It's in right. spell. It's what's on level one. Oh. Uh, it's to, to tell the the horses also to hide, whilst I fail to hide. Oh. Uh, the horses are freaked out and just like running back and forth. Uh, they're not very good at hiding. Oh no. Uh, I swear to God, if this dragon steals one of my baby horses, I'm gonna flip. Uh, all right. You should kill him. You should do that. So, um, everyone but Mel and Zutzag failed. Oh. Uh, no! Uh, Alex. Yes? If I may, <laughs> would naturally stealthy, one of my racial traits, be able to be used here? Uh, what does naturally stealthy do? You can attempt to hide even when you're uh, even when you're obscured only by a creature that is at least one size larger to you. I hide behind Malafay. <laughs> um, well, it's okay if this is no. no. You are <laughs> trying to hide already, and you got a six. <coughs> yep, fair. Okay, in that case, can I use powerful build to intimidate the dragons? No! <laughs> oh, All right. Please, no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. For the love of God, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, um, da, 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 as I look up how much HP horses have. No! Oh, no. Oh, my God! These horses are very powerful. They're twice the HP of a dragon. I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> okay. And, uh, for a second, it's quiet. And then there's a oh. whoosh as the shadow comes around again. And you hear this crackle in the air and... Boom! Bolts of lightning rake across the desert, striking the horses, and I'm going to roll to see who else is going to get attacked by lightning. Okay, can I, okay. Can I see this with uh, whatever it is that I've got, I keep forgetting, uh, Final Focus, and get in the way of at least one of the horses? <coughs> um, oh, lightning goes in a line that goes through people. Shit, all right, never mind. Yay, armor. Yay, piercing damage. Yay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, it also is going for Trevlon. Yep. It keeps on rolling the number for Trevlon. Holy shit, this thing hates Trevlon. <laughs> yeah, it's going for the horses, Trevlon, and Thavagath. Uh, I'm going to need Trevlon and Thavagath to make dexterity saving throws. This is something I'm actually okay you with. You should be able to get a plus Great. four because I'm probably within ten feet, five, fifteen Scott feet, to be honest. Uh, right. Okay. So you get a plus uh, four to that stellar roll. <laughs> would I be able to use cutting words to make this easier for myself? Like with this attack that's going to happen to me? It's a saving throw, easier not an attack. Gosh. Well, shit. Wait. I'm gonna check my stuff real oh, quick. Oh my god. All right, I got my will. Uh, you're a barbarian, and it's an effect you can technically see, so you do have advantage, Thavagath. Yeah, that's what I thought was. All right, sweet. Dang. Motherfucker. Well, all oh, of you failed. 
as lightning rakes across. You know what? Rather than roll 10 times and hope none of them fall off, I'm just gonna actually have this roll happen in the chat. Oh, ooh. Uh, oh, that was a spooky noise. I'm not happy. I'm not oh my. Oh my. I'm not happy, Bob. Oh my. I'm not happy. Not happy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, lightning rolls across the scrubland with a crack of thunder and this boom as it strikes the horses and incinerates them instantly. Thabagath oh. and Trevlon, you are also struck by lightning and basically fucking decimated. Yeah, Trevlon is down on the ground. His, his points are fucked. Yeah, I'm gonna lunge forward, and I guess I'll hit Trevlon with, uh, 10 points of my own hand. So is that 47 for everybody? Uh, 47 for the horses, Trevlon, and Thavagath. Uh, it could only attack in a line, and it chose you guys. Oh. Luckily, it's only 47. You've been uh, only 47, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm dead. <laughs> you got, you just got any back. Stop whinging. All right. I <laughs> want to cast a uh, cure. I want to cast healing word. On strong one. All right. Then I got still down. Please cast it on the bottom. My God, what happened? Well, I've still got 28 hit points, so I'm like. Oh, okay. Can I do it on strong one now? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Please, yes, do it. Thank you. Okay, so Trevlon's healed to 18 hit points because there was also the 10 with lay on hands. Uh, and Trevlon slowly rises, looking at the scene as the shadow uh, flies off into the distance. Zach tosses away the cloak, <laughs> making him look like a rock. Oh, shit. Yeah. That... I, I, I'm seeing things. That can't be what we're up That's against. That's exactly what it was! That Quickly, is exactly what we're up against, says Snoggyu. I need someone to remind me how uh, Raise the Dead works. Uh, Wait, you need to raise the dead? What? What? Uh, if you have the horses, 300 man. gold <laughs> and you have a minute left to spare, you can bring them back I from the dead with one hit point. I plenty of cash! Okay, uh... uh Which one? Which one Which of these I... charred bodies that have been just blown to smithereens are Check you? The horse passion or squishy? Squishy, squishy. Passion, oh passion. Oh. oh no! All right, squishy, the last survivor of the horses, slowly rises and looks about at all the dead horses around him, and whinnies in fear. <laughs> um, I wanna, I, I wanna help him. Um, animal friendship. <laughs> I want to put cut him down. I want. All right. I, I want to give him on the face. <laughs> so, uh, you are you convinced Squishy that uh it, you mean no harm as it looks at his dead buddies and looks at the lightning scars across the ground and it's like you're not my problem, you fucker. <laughs> How much, before I forget, how much did Karelian heal Trevlon for with uh, you healing? You have healing 18 points. hit points. 18. Cool. Uh. <laughs> I would suggest we move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. You yeah, let's, let's move. What do we do about the, uh, he's like points over at the other two horse bodies. We can just um, wave them to the earth. I can't. Uh, yeah, the the dragon above us. We got to keep moving. If this thing comes back around for another hit, we're all gonna get smacked. Thavagath haunches up the fucking uh, chariot arms in both hands and trudges along behind everyone else. I will happily roll whatever the fuck you want me to roll to make this happen. Make an athletics check. Yay! <laughs> nice. It Fucking incredible! He managed to drag along the chariot. Are you leaving the cart behind, though? Or I thought the cart was attached to the chariot. 
Uh, oh, it's no, a separate it's thing. By, uh, one of the poses, mm. yeah. Um, Probably what's, will what's in the, what's in the card grudgingly again? look at Mosca and like ping her and ask, would you be willing to help? Uh, Thanks. Mosca looks up. I really don't want to be another dragon target. Corellian nods and sort of like, I guess I'll try and help the other one. I suppose. Great. Athletics. Athletics. You are having a much harder time pulling a cart uh, because you don't have the power to carry things that are multiple times your weight, like Goliaths do. Really wait, wait, hold don't. on, hold on. Aren't our proportions still cha- switched? For the next hour, yeah. But you're All still right. a Goliath, and I'm still a kobold. Yeah, it doesn't change your racial traits. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Which is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Can, I, can I at least roll advantage? Because you know what, sure. Muscles? Yay! Yay! I don't want my boy to suffer. Unfortunately, Ooh, he suffer. Well, fuck. Uh, well... Fuck it, that's a wash. Um, I guess just if anything is packed on, are we leaving the carriage or the cart? Uh, well, I'm, I'm looking the cart, so I'm go- sorry, I'm looking the, the big ass carriage, so anything that's in the cart that we can't afford to well, take. You- okay, so you're helping Squishy cart. with the carriage, so it's the cart. Okay. <coughs> Alright, so you're leaving the cart? Yeah, what, what, Take whatever shit we have in it, distribute it, and heck off, I guess. Yeah, distribute and put it in the chair, mm. in the chariot if it fits. Not really. Um, it's got space for passengers, but if you start adding cargo, it's going to get very uncomfortable. Mm. Can I try and help Corellian with the cart? Because I don't want to leave that stuff behind. Sure, yeah. Roll athletics? Yeah, roll athletics. Okay. Okay, I have a one. Please what? hunt. Mm. Well, no, just... Wait, I'll offer advantage. I don't know right. how, but I will. The two scrawniest members of the party try to pull the cart along with Corellian. Listen, you have a bag of holding. We can just put anything that fits inside that and go. Let's just go. Let's go. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I start putting whatever I can into the bag of holding, anything that will fit, and if I can stuff anything in there that'll, like, just barely fit through the hole, then I will. Okay. Alright. You stuff what you can of the supplies from the cart, and you leave the two horses behind as a very injured-looking squishy limps alongside the carriage. The oh, perspective- can I heal him? Yes, the perspective card wears off as you <laughs> head into the evening. Oh, thank God. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on Squishy. All right. Squishy is healed for... That's most of Squishy's hit points. <clears throat> the wounds will probably heal with rest, but Squishy will never be the same. I guess that's another oh. scar for Squishy. Oh, no, Squishy. Squishy will never play the piano again? Nope. Nope. Oh, well, th- that's fine, because I don't think he could before anyways. Actually, yeah, he was the world's only piano-playing horse. Fuck! Fuck. Were you not paying Foster, attention to the introduction? <laughs> Clearly detailed. All right. Uh, so, the evening, thankfully, passes without incident, and you decide to huddle up in a cave where you're not exposed to the open sky so that you don't get bombarded with lightning in the night. I'll I'll take first watch I'll take second I guess I'll I'll take third I need more time to write something that's pretty yeah yeah I I think you should rest (laughs) I'm fine I've not it's not like I've been nearly Trevlon Trevlon (laughs) rest can I ask? Can um, I? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, uh, if you guys want to say do the same thing first, you go first. Um, I suppose before we all settle down, Carlyon sort of like looking over the map and uh, seeing how far we have left to go, and sort of um before we 
before we get in some before we get into Merdeal, I think that I should um sort of addressing everyone. I um think I should let I, I suppose I should let you all know that um I'm uh what is it, Krillian? Speak your mind. I have been to Murdeal before. Oh? I was, um... I, I did spend the last year at sea, but, um... I was born in Murdeal. And they are... Not likely to welcome me back, so, um, just, I suppose, I wanted to warn you all that there is a, that's a po possibility. Brilliant. Thank you for telling us. Why did you leave? <laughs> Tre uh, Trevlon sort of, <laughs> sort of looking. I'm sorry. Just suddenly, Tre like, <laughs> just suddenly up close and like, why did you leave? <laughs> Caring and well, concerned voices all around, and then a man look from the other side of the room. <laughs> Why did you leave? Oh, pulls out pen and paper. <laughs> I'm a journalist. <laughs> sort of. Seems like a little taken aback by the question, and like where they were sitting, they sort of like slump a little bit. I uh, there was a, I there was a, I don't. This, the, uh, Carlin sort of like looks off into the distance and just I please don't make me tell you hey hey, if you're not ready to talk about it that's absolutely fine uh, I have go ahead. Trevlon listen no, go ahead go ahead Trevlon a while back when I let the Rat King go you got at me for kind of, you know, sort of hold, withholding information and not telling you any, all the whole truth. I, you kind of lied. You said you were from abroad. I'm. I never, I never actually. I know that's semantics, but I never actually said that. I just said that. Okay, look. I think the point we're trying to make is that we agreed that we wouldn't keep secrets if it potentially affects the group. You say you may not be welcomed back with open arms. It makes I didn't me wonder. Know. I didn't know until we took the job. I didn't know that I'd ever no, no. be back here. That's okay. And I'm sorry. But we are going back here. If there's something we need to know about, we need to know about it. Sure, I can. It, you don't need so, to give us every detail. Just what you're comfortable with. <sighs> it was just a little over a year ago. I don't think that I can... <sighs> Let's just... Do in... we really need to press them for... You know what? You know what? Just... Okay. You all are going to hear it from somebody. No matter what. It's not exactly a secret back in Merdeal, and now that I think about it, I suppose I'd rather you all hear it from me directly. Um, are, you, are you sure? Crawling just sort of stares at the ground and slowly nods. I... Yeah, I suppose I'd rather you hear it from me. Well, right then. I was... Um, I was I was married once a little while ago, a little over a year ago, and um my uh, my my union with my wife wasn't exactly um looked well upon, one could say. Um it wasn't God I was young, I was stupid, I thought that Everything would be fine. I thought that it wouldn't matter because, you know, eventually, essentially, it's just a drop in the bucket. I mean, I probably won't even live past 30, but sorry, I'm getting off track, but 
Do you... Do you all remember um, in Ashrin, Alora, when we were at Misty Lavender, um, there was an... There was an... There, there was an elf noble, um, the one who passed us by in the street, and then he was sitting in the common room. Do you, do you happen to remember him? We passed his hunting grounds. Lord Ebernon. He was giving you a stink eye, if I remember rightly. <laughs> she... Brilliant. Was there a connection? I'm... My wife was his daughter. Um, I, I suppose, technically, he was my father-in-law, however that works, although, if we're going to be completely honest, um, no, but it... Anyway, let's just say that um, it didn't end up going well in the end. And so I ran because my wife told me to. Like a coward. And I've been avoiding her deal, and I've been avoiding Lord Ebernon, and I've been avoiding myself, I suppose, for the past year and some change. So there you have it. Um, I'm sure you'll probably hear about it in Radil if, well, when Pope recognized me. It wasn't exactly elves and or kobolds aren't necessarily really. Um, it's not. Krellin just sort of like falls silent. Given previous conversations, I think Malafina is able to put two and two together. And he falls silent. I'm... I'm so sorry. Looking back, it... It makes sense why you didn't... Why you didn't want to talk about it. <sighs> Honestly? I still wish that, still wish that none of you knew. I wish I never took this job. I wish I never had to go to my deal, but can't. There are some choices that aren't choices at all. They're inevitabilities. This is one of those things I always knew that would catch up with me. I just wanted to, I just wanted to have as much time as I could being being a normal person, I suppose. One, I, I, I can't. I can't. Fuck! I can't do this. I'm. I'm sorry. Please just give us some time. I. <sighs> Travelon stands up in the Travelon. Sorry, Thavagas. Hello. Up. Sorry, I was. I was looking at some. Uh, with. Sorry, Thavagas stands up and immediately without. Uh, without another word or other action, just starts gently uh, shushing everyone to move the fuck away, gesturing at horse to, uh, sorry, gesturing to from uh, Squishy to just kind of go in that direction and cuddle up with Mushka real quick. Travelon is kind of sitting in the same position, just kind of looking. There's not really much of an expression on his face. It's Malafane is just looking, kicking a rock. How close to uh, Karelian is Trevlon? Like from the other side of the cave, or like just just across the way? Like still in? The, is he is he still in his bubble? Or that would be up to Trevlon. I'm yeah, I'm I was yeah. S like, are you still in the we... bubble or no? The, bu the, the bubble being what, ex what exactly? It, it, like personal his personal bubble. space, like where he'd be comfortable with you being, considering he just asked us to let him alone for a bit. Yeah, I think so. You were in that? Yes. 
in that case, I'm, I apologize, my good RP friend. Uh, Move, there we go. bitch, get out the way. Ponytail and <laughs> gently jags you away. Uh, Trev <laughs> Trevlon kind of like, kind of pulls his ponytail out of, tries to pull his ponytail out of Pav's hand and looks kind of indignantly at him. No, no, it's 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 fine. Uh, you don't need to. Krillin will sort of like get up and just sort of like move towards the cave entrance and um, sort of just slump against Mosca and look out, take watch, I guess. Great. All right. Okay. It's time to go on watch, everyone. I'll, uh... I'll take second if, if anyone's ready to have a second. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, I think you've gone really quiet. Is that just me? Yeah, you've gone incredibly quiet. You you small. Hey, no you. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Hey. I me I meant volume wise. You're small, height wise. Oh. Oh, well, oh. All right. F. I guess I, I guess <laughs> I, I guess I just have to deal with that. Fuck. Dang. Dang. Okay. That fell off the table. Uh, Corellian, just as you're about to nod off, you hear the the snap of someone's foot on a twig coming from somewhere outside the cave. I flinch, look up, and try to discern what it was. And I guess I'll stand up as well. Okay. All right. You uh, you can't see from inside the cave, so you take a few steps outside and have a quick look around. Make another... Uh, actually, make a survival check to see if you can track what the hell that was. All right. You... Uh, you take a few more steps outside, despite the snap of a twig, whoever or whatever made that sound is pretty good at covering their tracks. So, uh, you spend quite a while looking. Da, 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 da. Let me double check numbers real quick. Wait, what are numbers? Can I ask Muska to help me? <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, Muska helps sniff out. She takes a little bit, picks up a trail. You follow her, and, uh, like, several, several yards back, like a couple hundred yards away from the cave entrance at least, you see this old-looking, uh, green kobold in, uh, ill-fitting chain mail, uh, standing in the middle of the grove, looking your way, and grinning. He... Do I recognize him? Uh, this is one of the old guards from Merdeal way back when you were growing up there. I will... put... I will put a hand, uh, put a claw on Oscar's shoulder and sort of steal myself and nod and... Uh, the old guy can I help you with smirks. What brings you here. Nods. Well, you see, we heard there was, uh, you know, whispers down south of some kind of kobold fell in love with an elf, came back home. Good to see they were true. Is it good? Well, I'd say so, considering you're right where we want you. And what would you want me for? You hear behind you. And turn around. There is a no, silver. S there's a silver scaled kobold in leather armor standing behind you, gun to your head. Evening, Corellian. Yes. Can can is that yell audible from the cave? Yeah, I was gonna. Ask was there a that. yell? Well, when he said "Evening, Corellian." <laughs> All right. Uh, those of you who want to make perception checks. Hell yes. I was about to go on watch anyway, so... Alright. 
Uh, Momo, you were about to go on watch, so you uh, slowly wake up. He was about to go on watch. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing second watch. I thought I had second watch. No. No. I must have had third then. Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, Malifane and Momo, the both of you wake up to find gun barrels in your faces, and several kobolds (laughs) have gotten into the cave. Uh, 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 hi! Hello! <laughs> uh, That's about Bevo. far enough from you, little birdie. Bevo got lazily swats away at him in his sleep. Just going, oh. <laughs> can we help you, sirs? Hmm. Yes, you can. Weapons, armor, equipment, all of it. On the pile, on the floor, now. What? what why? What did it? Uh, the kobold raises his pistol, fires into the air, points it back at uh, Momo. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you twice! He complies! He complies! He does it! Alright. The gunshot is very clearly audible and wakes Trevlon and Thavagath up. And also, Corellian, you can hear it too! Corellian okay. just winces and sort of like pings Mosca to just I have a question. stand down. Will they know. pay attention yeah. if Mal leaves the, like, keeps hold of the apples and the You'll have to make a sleight of hand versus their perception. Okay. Okay, you may notice that I rolled a small constitution save right there. Tavagath wants to try to stay asleep. <laughs> okay. Well, no, no, he doesn't. I want Tavagath to... All right. You don't think they've it. noticed the apples. Tavagath, you stay asleep. And as you're unconscious, you hear click, bang, and you're immediately at zero hit points and two failed death saves. Oh, what? yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Shit, I thought. Um, uh, Trevlon immediately Can stands. Can I heal him, please? You drop your equipment. <laughs> Trevlon immediately looks to um Davigev's body and says, "Mate, if uh, looks at the... is there a cobalt that's got a gun in his hand? There are like there are like at like, least a him. dozen of cobalts with guns in their hands in this cave." <sighs> Look, mate, I don't know what I have to pay to help make sure that you let me heal him, but I will pay whatever it takes. Just let me... How much you got? get him alive. 1,709... 1,097 silver, 100 copper... uh, 196 copper, actually. 5 gold and 8 platinum. 231 gold and 3,800 gold. Uh, all right, as, as you as you start listing all this off, and they start rifling through the bag of holding, looking for it. Thavagath, make a death saving throw. Oh Fucking my god, no! Oh my god! It's been six no. seconds. Can I please roll persuasion? No. To- <laughs> well, that's the third one. Thavagath's dead. Thavagath is go dead. Back. No! no, no, no. Feelings. Goodbye, everybody. Tre- Tre- Trevlon, Trevlon immediately yells, Listen! If He's dead. If you don't... S- Trevlon starts to, like, um, like look at this the nearest kobold in the face. Uh, listen to me. If you don't let that bird, and he points to, to Momo, get our friend back to life. Do you know who we are? Do you know what the fuck we're trying to do here? Did you just decide to randomly pop into a cave, shoot some people because, oh, you know what? This will be an easy take. Make we an intimidation check with disadvantage. Uh, oh my god! No! Um, no, 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 fuck. No, no, fuck! Fuck, 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 fuck. <sighs> the kobolds oh look over at you, look at their numbers and the fact they have guns, the one you're talking to, as you're ranting, aims his gun slowly behind him towards no. Momo. No, 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 please go on. Who are you? Very concerned citizens who are desperately trying to do good and help people. How far away am I from all of this? Uh, if you dashed, you could get over there in uh, 30 seconds. I would like to um, roll persuasion to possibly convince the one next to Momo to just let With him With disadvantage! Can I oh offer God, can advantage I to him? mitigate it? Please. Alex, can you do me a favor and not sound quite so happy? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you try and intimidate someone and then try to persuade them. Um, Krellian will sort of like 
take a breath, claws still raised, and just... I'm sure we're not useful to you dead. I'm not quite sure what's happening over there. But I'll happily go and do whatever you want if you leave the rest of them be. Make a persuasion check. I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. Fuck me running. Fuck. All right, so uh, I think Chevlon was also going to try and roll a persuasion check. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. Fuck that. I've, I've decided against that. I'm not going right. to do that. In that case, Stabagap has 30 seconds before Revivify no longer works. Please! Can I please just heal him? Momo make a persuasion check. Oh my god! Can I give him advance? Oh my god, can I please? Oh my god. Uh, the kobold sighs, rifles through the stuff, hands over your amulet. Any funny business, you join him. Oh my god! Oh my god, thank god. So... A Please. feature of the Zealot Barbarian. You don't need to spend any money in order to use revival spells on them. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So, Thabagath, you shoot back to life Ooh. with one hit point and a very holy nasty fuck. head wound bleeding from it, just as you see a kobold snatch Ooh. the holy symbol from Momo. Thav, I want you to remain completely still and don't do anything. You just died. What? Yeah, you just died. Just don't, don't do or say anything to piss these guys off. Oh my god! 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 Um, question: Are are Stalko and Zetzag held up as well? Or all right, is it just us? I'm going to narrate that. Uh, all right. So eventually, the kobolds manage to strip you of your weapons under threat of being shot again, <laughs> and uh, they all gather up, look around. Uh, Snalgu is with you, as is your horse and Moshka. They look around. Where the hell's the captain? I don't know, probably scarpered off or something. Guy's not very good when it comes to tactical decisions. Whatever. We got the main ones. Come on, you Come on, you worthless maggots. We're going into town. <laughs> All right. Sure. <laughs> Don't have much of a choice. All right, so uh, you are forced to march onward. Uh, one, two, three hexes. I'm going to need everyone to make three Constitution saving throws. Three in a row. Three in a row, because it's three you hexes. You get a plus four if you're within fifteen feet of me, which I great. One to twenty, real quick. All right. Uh. So, uh, Momo and Karelian, you are very tired having been ready to go on watch. The forced march takes you hardest of all. You both get, uh, one level of exhaustion. Uh, as you march, Momo, uh, the kobolds pull out this strange contraption of, like, wicker, metal, and tin that, like, unfolds in on- and it unfolds into what look like handcuffs- but then clasp around your wings, leaving your arms free. Uh, you do not have flight while those things are on. My wings are my arms. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was about to ask, what does that mean for another Cochra? <laughs> okay, this is, so for this is most Aarakocra, their wings are separate from their arms. Would you rather I just bind your arms completely, or are you going to Thank accept you, that you- Please, please be nice to me, Alex. I just Great. witnessed one of my friends die and then come back. Please be nice they to me. They have bound your arms. As I pull up uh, the Merdil music. Da, 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 da. You step into town as the sun starts slowly rising. Uh, Merdil, the first thing you notice is that there's this big old... Uh, glass canopy, basically, over the hillside of tinted glass that's covering most of the city and making it so that there's not direct sunlight coming in and making it so that the kobolds cannot see. Uh, 
as you further look around, all of the buildings, windows and doors and stuff seem packed incredibly close together. Uh, given the fact that it's kobolds, you would assume they're completely used to it, and it's just fine. Uh, da -da -da, there's the Merdeal music. Alright. Uh, and you're dragged through town looking at all this to, uh, and a crowd of jeering kobolds, uh, like, laughs at you as you're taken to the streets of town. Uh, Snalgu is pulled away from the main group and taken into the mouth of a big ol' cave. Uh, I'm going to make the map, which is new and uprising art and fantastic. <coughs> Uh, Ooh, up in front of these lovely, lovely people so that you can actually see it. Boop. There's Merdeal. Ooh. That's so cool. Oh my god, I can Uprising still see my own awesome. things too. Yes! <laughs> you, you know, I would, you know, I'm very excited and happy about this, but I'm also still kind of recovering from that heart attack you gave me in real life, Alex. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I'd right. probably be more happy about you this if we weren't in our current predicament. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the, the kobolds quickly drag you down a side street into this dark, kind of crumbling looking building and open the door and you can see it's some kind of makeshift jail that they throw you into after taking your gear, uh, one of the kobolds laughs, says, Welcome home, Karelian! And slams the gate shut, leaving you locked inside the cell. I immediately scramble, like, scramble to Thavagev, and I just don't let go. Even though my hands are shackled, I just go, like, <laughs> just plaster my body onto him. <clears throat> Trevlon is looking at Karelian, trying to gauge uh, any sort of response. Carlion has like this thousand yard stare um, past the past the bars. Uh, they're they're basically like kind of in one of the corners, like leaned up against it, just non-responsive at this point. So we're not just gonna take this, are we? <laughs> Mal, one of our friends just got shot. It's either we take it or we die. I'm not exactly in any position to suggest, oh, let's rise up and fight our oppressors. No, I don't want to die, Mal. Please. We need to stay calm and just... here either. But no, but dying is worse than being caged. Would you not agree? I think we need to relax as much as we can, because as far as I can tell, we are stuck here until further notice. I think we need to rest. We're not dead yet. We're not dead yet, that means they're not going to kill us. We don't have our gear, we don't have our armor. Unless... You don't have anything you can use to cast spells, either. Exactly. So, so, Corellian, you're telling me that they have such a grudge about you marrying an elfin woman that they would capture us, put us in jail, and shoot one of us. I think there's more to it than that. It can't be I, that. I, oh, you, you, you know what? And Trevlon looks at Momo, both like looking so, in mock surprise. Gen, like <clears throat> you can tell that Trevlon is kind is not himself right now. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what, Momo? I think you might be right. He kind of like recoils and. Kind of Brilliant. Looks down. What? Are there any? Are there any guards? Like, are we being guarded right now? Uh, yeah, there are a couple of kobold guards, just kind of like uh, lounging against the walls, chatting amongst themselves. Uh, hmm. I. Brilliant. What else happened here? Because it doesn't. Please. Sort of story, fine, 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 fine. We'll get into it. So, and and, and Carlin sort of like shoots a little side eye at the guards, <clears throat> but kind of turns a shoulder to the um to the to the bars of the cell and uh, look and looks towards the party, but not at them. Right. Yeah, just humor me for flavor text, by the way. How much attention are they paying? I'm not gonna do anything, but. 
Um, given that you don't have any of your equipment on you, they're not paying a whole lot of attention. They don't think you're going to be able to get away with a lot. In that case, Malifane's just going to lie on his back and just toss an apple up and down. Just while listening to all this. All right. So... Yeah, they rolled a natural one perception. They look at the apple, they're like, yeah, that's fine. They meant to take the apple and leave you alone. <laughs> Alright, fine. So by chance, I met my wife, fell in love, got married. People weren't happy about it on either side, neither her family nor mine. I suppose Lordy Bernan always had a bit of a soft spot for Hespera and I guess he figured that it was a phase. A couple of years is nothing for an elf. Um, but, you know, a phase is all well and good until... until... Well, I was, I was naturally a traitor, you know. Uh, got... Wasn't, wasn't exactly, it was the talk of the town in not a very good way. Um, elves and kobolds don't get along at all. I've been called every name the book under the sun you green skin dungeon dog you know dragon filth all that sort of thing so elves don't like kobolds kobolds don't like elves you know from the other side you get called a called a tree fucker you know etc so on but we figured it didn't matter all too too much we could just get away uh, we could make our way out of here and i don't know what happened we were we were it was it was meant for it was it was meant for me there was something happened i don't know what i don't know who we were ambushed i suppose stuck up on through sheer happenstance. Uh, Hespera took the arrow that was meant for me. There was something on it. There was, I don't know if it was disease, it was poison, and I didn't, I wasn't, I couldn't heal like I can now. And... She must have seen something. She told me to run. She cast a spell on me, and she told me to run, and so I ran, but I never figured out who did it. I never knew who kobolds trying to trying to kill me and frame the elves or if it was elves trying to kill me and you know get Lordy Brown's daughter back away from this ridiculous phase I don't I don't know what happened I I really don't I got on the first ship that I could I ran through the night and <laughs> got on the first ship that I could, and I kept my head down, and I went out to sea, and poised, and Carlin sort of, like, clutches at their chest, where they showed, um, Malifane the, the scar that was there. There was something on that arrow, and I survived, and she didn't. And I... Now I'm here, suffering the consequences. And because I was a fool, you all are suffering the consequences. But that's well. why you took the oath that you did, isn't it? To gain some sort of retribution, right? I... It's a blur. I was delirious with fever. I could feel that sickness or that poison in my bones and I was there and I was almost dead but I made a promise I made a promise I made a vow I promised that I would bring Hesper back no matter what I promised that I no matter the cost I would find a way to bring her back to life because otherwise it would have been wasted I mean think about it she was, she was barely over a hundred. She had at least four hundred years in front of her, and here I am. You know. She's... that's lifetimes more than I could ever offer the world. 
she was better than me in pretty much every way. So that was the promise I made, and it's the promise I've been sticking to. I want to find who did it and what happened, but... Right. Bringing her back has been the most important thing that I, I got. Yeah. yeah. That is why I asked you about raising the dead and all that sort of thing. Okay. Absolutely right. Thab doesn't say this out loud, but I would have to roll to see if Thab has ever heard of anyone bringing back someone back from the dead from that long ago without being successful. Make a religion check. Religion. Oh, fuck. You. <laughs> bringing <laughs> someone back from the dead? What the hell is that? <laughs> that is something you want to think nothing about, Thabagat. Can I try? You know what? I'm get Yeah, actually, I'll... I'll take that as well. Okay. Because um. a big part of me is like, ooh, zombie logic. Another part of me is like, oh wait, D&D. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so can I roll religion again? Sure. Of all mm. times. Oh, damn. Uh, Momo and Nelephane, neither of you know of any particular spell that would bring someone back after that long. I only know of a vivifying. Thank God I know it. But, I. I'm sorry. I'm I sure don't know. And if there is, I'll... I'll learn it. I'll do what I can. Why are you... I don't... Why what? I just don't understand. What's not to understand? Corellia... Uh... Uh... Kevlon, uh... Size. Uh, okay. Uh, do you want to go first, my dude? I, oh it, my god! It's it's up to you. If you, I I have a long thing to say. So if you, if you got something less than long, then go first. Uh, okay, fine. I'll, I guess I'll go. Um, what's what's not to understand? It's a noble cause, and personally, and Malifane rolls one of the apples towards. Cor- it's a cause that. I'm willing to fight for. It's a very noble cause. Rowling regards the apple and just rolls it back. <sighs> Trevlon looks at his sort of his feet um, and sighs and looks at Corellian. Mate, what happened with your with your spouse? That's awful. It's horrible. It's unfair. And I want you to know that you weren't... What you did, leaving, getting the hell out of Dodge, that wasn't cowardice. So please don't beat yourself up for that. But what I have to say... And Trevlon now stands and his fists are clenched. You knew we were coming back. You knew that people had a hit on you. You knew all of this, and it was until we were right outside the city gates that you didn't... (sighs) I'm not angry at you for what you did back then. I don't think anybody reasonably should be, but... (sighs) Corellian, why didn't you say anything? Corellian will sort of, like shuffle and get up, stand up on their two feet. Still can't really make eye contact with anyone. He didn't. Nothing that I say is going to really help anything. It's all going to sound like an excuse. I didn't know that it was going to be this bad. 
even if you didn't know it was going to be bad, you knew something would happen. Even if it's something small, it would have been good to know, because we would have been able to help you, to prepare. We would have been able to do something about this. And Carlin will sort of like... Nothing. Nothing I can say will. Um, you, could, I, you don't have to say anything about excusing yourself or doing anything like that. All you have to do is not do this again because I can't let another one of us die. Please. I just wanted to be the person that we thought it was for the walk. That's all I wanted. I'm so the that's person. nothing. That's nothing. Corellia, the person I thought you were was brave and strong and able to take on anything because you protected everyone so well and you loved the people you wanted to help and you were a, you were a good person but you're not a coward for leaving Merdeal originally but you're Not telling us was. Fav nearly died. You want to learn from this? You don't have to change in the way that you rush in to help other people. You don't have to change in your desire to do good. But you have to change your perception of yourself. You hated yourself so much. You thought that you would be... What? We would not... We would think of you less? Because... Because... Thav... Look at Thav. The guy had a whole history about how he, he against his will, hurt people he loved, and we love him still. Mm. What, I'm... Don't lie like this again. Please. Just, all you have to do, all you have to say, is that you're not going to do this again. And by God, this is all going to be forgotten and we'll... Get right back into it, but you promised me. And Trav looks Corellian in the eyes. Look at me and promise me you'll tell us the truth and you'll keep us safe, not just from scary fucking monsters, but your secrets and your past as well. Corellian does his best to not meet your gaze, but eventually eventually he has to just see he's been crying a little bit just I promise but you're wrong I've always been Trev Trevlon there's no secrets left to keep Trevlon immediately um, starts walking forward a little briskly, and to everybody else, it looks like Trevlon's going to like just run in for a punch. But instead, <laughs> Trevlon sort of just grips Corellian in a very tight hug as he ugly cries. <laughs> I thought you had to specify ugly cry, by the way. Probably tears, like, tears, not just—it's not good to look at. Probably like flinches as you approach. Which is, I don't. I don't understand. You're I not... don't understand. Why? Why? Why are you forgiving me? Please, Be don't, please. It's not me who has to forgive you, mate. It's you. Right now, you're surrounded by friends who love you. But you. And Trevlon sort of gets out of the hug a minute and puts his hands on his shoulders. If you want to be the best you you can be, you got to realize that you're not a coward. That you're brave and you're strong and you're good. Because it's not just something that I'm saying for meaningless platitude here, it's the truth. You are a good person, Corellian. Malifane stands up a little bit. And besides... Even so, vulnerability is a natural state of, well, any 
just because you're vulnerable in one moment doesn't make you any less of a being than anyone else. All you have to do is just stand up for yourself. That's all. You really want to make sure that... that everything's forgiven? I'll tell you what. Say you're not a coward. And say we're gonna get through this. Carlin sort of like ducks their head to look at the ground. Just we are going to get through this. And I what else? You can do it. Please. I've listen, I've been Please. Okay, so first of all, Strevlon and Karelian, both of you get inspiration. Woo! Yes! Oh, <laughs> oh. Second of all, as Trevlon looks at Karelian with one final please, the doors to the jail swing open, and you can see this uh, green-skinned kobold in gaudy, like, purple robes, all sorts of gold jewelry inset into his uh, his clothes and his crown and his staff looks decorated just like a king this isn't uprising art but i love it still and i just want to show everyone the picture of this asshole oh my it is a king joy yeah and flanking him are uh, two identical looking uh, white scaled kobolds with uh, robes tattered uh, scrolls with runes on them dangling from said robes. A little bit of a. Uh, uh, it's not chainmail actually, it's a breastplate and uh, decorated arcane antlers. Uh, these two twin uh, white scaled kobolds walk behind the king looking very stoic while the king himself looks very twitchy and very angry. Again, not Uprising's art. You need to see the mental picture of these guys, because they oh, are something. That. Yeah, that'll that'll do it. <laughs> crocodile face. Very tribal. Mm. He'd kill me, and I'd be okay with it. Uh, All right. <laughs> uh, I see. The the kobolds look over at you. The the two white scaled ones with completely even stares. The king just darts his eyes back and forth scampering around in front of the bars. And what do we have here? He says. <laughs> Spies. Thieves. Assassins. <laughs> Spike oh your business. No! Curling, like, slowly, because his back was to the bars, just sort of turns around. You! Looks. You! A traitor to the deal! Come back to try and bring us down from within again! Did you? Not this time! No, no, no! Now I'm in charge! Now I'm so much more clever! Now I see your plans! Your evil, evil plans! You won't get it past me this time! What? Is your plan to peek the microphone? Because it's working! <laughs> Yeah, he's using a sonic attack, oh shit! <laughs> to be honest, sir, Trevlon is very frantically wiping the tears and snot from his face. <laughs> um, gotta be honest, sir, we weren't really gonna be doing the whole um, toppling regime Who are business. You? My name is Trevlon Bluekill. I'm a journalist. Journalist? That sounds like a spy to me! He turns to uh, the twins. That sounds like a spy, does it not, Nasa? I'm Raza, sir. Turns to the other one. That sounds like a spy! Yes, it does, sir. Uh, not really spying. Spying implies I'm doing it for, Stop like, a government Stop your filthy benefit. lies before I cut wait, your tongue out! Wait, 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 wait. Curl Curly is sort of like... They, they had gone completely deadpan once they turned around, but just sort of, like, peers at the, at the, the king, at the kingly garbed kobold. Since when are you... 
this sucked in. <laughs> People didn't recognize the greatness of Zakti, but the Whisperer, the Whisperer did. She told me everything. She told me how to bring back a dragon. She told me everything about how I can be great and how you are worth nothing. So it was you who brought back the dragon? Yes, all Zakti. The twins look at each other, roll their eyes, <laughs> look back <laughs> over at you. Malifane smirks a little bit. Right. Oh, humble king, we, for we are He not snaps quite attention there. to you, oh. points you! You think oh. I forgot you? You think I forgot your crimes against the city? Your vandalism, your thievery! The S was here, painted oh. on the side oh. of my palace walls! Oh, oh no. <laughs> Sire. That was not him! Really? You plan oh. to think that Zokti's own eyes lie to him? You plan to lie to Zokti and try to feed him these untruths, little bird? <laughs> Humor me for a moment. Uh, per just assume that I am... Um, I am just... He admits it! He stupidity. admits it! He's already got the assumption step down. Humor me of my own stupidity. What exactly would I have done? I just told you! Vandalism! Thievery! Painting as was here on the palace walls! Yeah, that's He has a twin! Right. Uh, before we decide to dig ourselves any more holes, uh, King Zogdi, you have clearly graciously given us mercy on this occasion, for we are still alive. I must ask, why are we alive? You will confess, and then we will execute you! I see. I have what? a question. What are executions like in Meridian? <laughs> oh, they are uh, pretty damn nasty. You don't know if Zakti's changed the laws, but you do know that uh, they usually involve being thrown into pits with monsters. Oh, yay. Fantastic. We oh, my God, right. it's the Rancor pit. God. Mm. What so, are what are what are you anticipating that we will confess to? Your spies, thieves, and assassins! I thought I made that perfectly clear, did I not? You've made that perfectly clear, sir. Yes, Basha. Except we're not. <laughs> yeah. Then we shall just have to make you confess. The twins tap their staves on the ground, and the image of a dragon appears behind them, roaring. Let's see if after frying your nerves, you'll be able to talk some more. Can I roll Arcana to see if that thing's gonna really fucking kill us? Yes. Um, Shit. given how the rest of the kobolds behaved, probably you don't know the specifics. Can I try and roll Arcana? Sure! Take advantage, because I am genuinely curious. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, you get the feeling those are, like, spiritual dragon heads that mimic the breath weapon of a dragon. Oh, we yeah, those will, those will kill us. We don't have a choice here, do we, King Zokti? Uh, the twins approach, Zokti smirks, and then he looks over at Thabagath, holds up a hand, the twins instantly stop, and he points. You! Thabagath? Uh, Phil is <laughs> maybe dead. Motherfucker! Hmm. He said um, ten uh minutes, twenty minutes ago, so... Fuck. Quick question uh, to buy to buy time. Is there any sort of legal procedure in Merdial? Um, there was when you were here. <laughs> Something I tells see. me that likely things change. Mm. Right. Right. <sighs> All right. Shh. Well, that's absolutely fantastic, because I've got no idea when Phil is coming back, so I'm just gonna put him on autopilot. Uh, 
Fair enough. Zakti turns to Thavagat, points, and says, You! And the very bloodied, weary Thavagath looks up. Me. You are... You're a gladiator, yes, from the guild? Thavagath slowly nods. Uh, Zakti turns to uh, the twins, says something in Draconic, Kurtonmakan, which... uh, Corelli, and you recognize he's saying trap fest. And the twins oh, tap their stabs to the ground again as Zakti runs out screaming trap fest at all the kobolds and a big old cheer erupts through the crowd. Uh, oh, fuck. Corelli, what did he just say? Yeah, I'm confused. Remember that festival? Oh... Festival. What about uh, it? Congratulations, gold. says one of the twins. You're tonight's entertainment. Wait, what's going on? What happened? What's going on? Rest up. You'll need it, they say, as they step out the door and close it behind them. Corellian, what does this festival put involve? Kurtomok isn't really a uh, particularly... Um, Benevolent god. They kind, of, they kind of like you give a little wavering, sort of like pained grin. Um, how 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 much would I be able to tell them about like how the festival actually goes? We'll be able to find that out next time on Dungeons and Douchebags Fallen oh. Empires. Me you all it's take crazy. a long rest, so you're fully healed up. Uh, yeah. and for, I never took damage. And for getting to Merdeal, uh, you heal up, but b- uh, you get 1,500 uh, experience points. 6,000. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. Was that <laughs> Phil, was that you? Are you back? No, that was me. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, you, you did a very good imitation. Thank you. Oh, I right. worked very hard. So... Uh, so we will see you all next week in Dungeons and Douchebags Fallen Empires for uh, more Trap Fest! It's gonna be fun! <laughs> Alright, uh, I think people are trying to organize a Wednesday stream of Tales from the Loop. If that doesn't happen, yes. either way, there's gonna be a Thursday stream with Darby, and Friday is Tomb of Annihilation! Uh, we'll see you all pretty soon. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye.